Welcome to SVG TV News for Monday, March 7, 2016. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. It is very important for Vincentians to be able to socialize better and make a greater contribution to the nation. So says Senior Officer with the Adult and Continuing Education Division in the Ministry of Education, John Zanjorge, who was speaking on Sunday's Hit Stock program. The topic discussed was on citizens' education, their rights, and their importance within the country's social and political context. George says with citizenship education, persons become more aware of the human and political issues at stake in their society or nation and look at each citizen's ethical and moral qualities, which he says aids in fostering a safer, more productive society. Responding to comments made by a caller that SVG needs a new government who can provide fair and unbiased opportunities for all Vincentians despite partisan politics, George says that SVG has one of the best adult and continued education divisions in the region and that he believes there are no barriers in a systematic way to keep people out of opportunities. We are here, we see, we pride ourselves as the only place where persons who are not empowered can begin the journey in an education landscape. They can start the education journey at the adult and continue education. So I think we have been doing our part and there are a lot of persons out there who can this and who are gaining from our expertise in the field. We don't discriminate. We go out in the field, house to house, town hall meeting, informally look for attachments for person right now we are going around the, to the private sector talking to the private sector so that their workers you know can be in some form of structured education environment the adult and continuing education officer says because of the interactive and broad nature of citizen education Vincentians must be taught how to think critically how to question and interact on a daily basis for their rights what is for them in society and what the laws of SVG are. So it's really trying to, as we will say in adult, is to have the person moving from A to B as an individual. The content is important, but the context is also very important. It's trying to get an individual who can think logically and question certain issues because civic education is also happens daily in your home, at your workplace, on the bus, and everything like that. If you get an individual as rounded and empowered who can go and interact in these fairs, then that will help us a lot. Treasurer of Unity Youths and President of the West St. George Unity Youths, James Gibson, proposes that the Ministry of Education and Social Development and Youth form an interministerial committee to look seriously into citizen education. I, it should not be a relatively difficult task to implement because we already have the support structures in place, which is we have the schools, we have teachers, we already pay teachers, we already build schools. So these, these, these structures could support us in implementing the citizenship education. Also, I, I, I look towards um, external funding, mm -hmm. such as we may get some grants or whatever the case may be for a period of time. Um, those could also go towards the community outreach sensitization parts of the, the citizenship education project. Um, other sources such as, well, well, sometimes you don't even necessarily need financial support. Sometimes all you need is, is, is people support. You, you need, exactly. You need the persons in order to actually volunteer their time in order to get this stuff up and running, through delivering it through community. St. Vincent and the Grenadines on Friday, March 4, 2016, received approval to grant Caribbean Vocational Qualification, CVQ, at a meeting of the Council for Human and Social Development in Guyana. With this approval, St. Vincent and the Grenadines can now award the CVQ to persons who will pursue technical and vocational education and training programs in and out of post-secondary institutions. The Caribbean Vocational Qualification is part of a procedure towards achieving the free movement of certified skilled workers under the Caribbean single market and economy and represents the accomplishment of a set of competencies which define core work practices of an occupational area. 
In order to earn an award, candidates must demonstrate a certain competence in reaching CARICOM approved occupational standards by industry experts and employers in a range from level one to five. The granting status that SVG has now will also mean that skilled and certified workers will be able to seek job opportunities in any other CARICOM state with less difficulty. It is very important to invest in the training of healthcare professionals to enhance their response to the needs of adolescents. That's according to country specialist for the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, here, Anique Wilson, who says these needs are intertwined into women and child health, hence the reason why there is a particular focus on the life cycle approaching reproductive health. Speaking at a workshop held earlier today, Wilson says the focus on adolescent health aims at identifying the issues which affect adolescents and how these issues can be dealt with as they relate to sexual decisions and behaviors as well as their personal development. When we train you and we provide you with information on sexual and reproductive health services, we require you to design programs to fit the different adolescent groups who you're going to be coming in contact with. We always have to remember our marginalized youths. And when these groups are in situations of vulnerability, they are often seen as invisible, they are usually voiceless, and they could be victims of stigma and discrimination. So when we are dealing with our young people and our adolescents, we have to define the different groups or subgroups that we are dealing with. And we need to focus on those that we need to really help along the way, not forgetting those who are stronger and who we can use to build the others. It is important to note that sexual and reproductive health decisions and behaviors during the adolescent period have lifelong consequences on, young, on the young person's life, also their life chances and their vulnerability. Because as you know, adolescents tend to take risky behavior. They, they tend to get involved in risky behaviors. They take risk. So you're going to get new information. So as you get this new information, it's going to equip you to do a better job as you go back out in the community. The PAHO country representative further states that gaining the confidence of adolescents is one way of creating effective relationships and communication among youths and healthcare professionals. So you're very judgmental and you, they figure that you're putting them under pressure, they would close up. They wouldn't communicate with you, they wouldn't talk with you. So you have to make sure you gain their confidence. Speak with them, chat with them. You have to get into some of the issues that they are, that they are facing. You have to also understand some of the, the, the commodities they work with. The Facebook, the, all these gadgets that they have. Because they're going to speak to you in, in, in those terms. They're going to tell you about them. So you have to really understand the adolescents and get down to their level in order for them to talk with you because they talk with their peers. They feel comfortable speaking with their peers. We want you today as you leave the workshop for the next two years to feel more comfortable because I know you're accustomed to working with them, but to also build your confidence because from time to time we all need to be rebooted as the people would say and come again so that we could deal with the issues that are out there. Wilson urges the gathering to continue their efforts of, at reaching out to the youths noting that this has and will continue to evoke a change in their behaviors and development. It was at the perinatal meeting a few weeks uh, last week and one of the things that came out that struck me a lot, the adolescent birth dropped to 15 percent of overall births. The year before it was I think 19.5. I need you to give yourself a round of applause because it didn't just happen like that. It meant that you did some sort of hard work out there. If you didn't work, if you didn't meet with the adolescents, they would not make such good decisions. So I just want to encourage you to continue your good work and to ask of you and beg of you to use the information that you would have been exposed to to make better choices as you speak with our adolescents. Minha, while representative from the Planned Parenthood Association, Nelly Phillips, says while it may be unfavorable to know that the youths are sexually active, they in fact are. She urges healthcare professionals to ensure that the youths have access to family planning commodities as well as correct and consistent information. Because our adolescents are given the right to have sex at age 16, 15, but they are not given that right for access to contraceptives. How can we then 
fulfill the Oxford Dictionary definition of address or family planning if access to contraceptives is not available to all those who are given consent to have sexual intercourse. Access to contraceptive is very important, extremely important. And as much as I am saying yes, we would have provided over 1,000 service, I am still saying that it's a big hurdle for us. We have yet to touch the threshold because of access. If one does not have access, we will be spinning in mud forever. Phillips took the opportunity to outline some of the collaborative work done by the association in an effort to create access to information and family planning methods to marginalized individuals. We also try to ensure that all persons in the vulnerable categories do have access to such by providing free service to all in certain areas alongside the Ministry of Health. And we call these the pop-up clinics, where all services that are offered at the association is delivered in a particular community free of charge alongside nurses who would give up their Saturdays and workers and all other persons within the medical field give up their Saturdays freely to ensure that this service is being delivered. We also work along with the Ministry of Education where we help strengthen the health and family life education program. We choose schools that we know are of course troublesome schools and we say to you that we take a lot of pleasure in doing our work. We do get some assistance, we do get a lot of headaches at times to just the same, but we continue to fight because we know at the end of the day those same children are the future of tomorrow. Observing the United Nations theme for International Women's Day 2016, Planet 5050 by 2030, Step It Up for Gender Equality. The National Council of Women, the NCW, is also advocating the need for the rights of women and girls to be respected. In her address to commemorate the day which is observed around the world on March 8th, President of the Local Women's Council, Beverly Richards, called on government and other agencies to be supportive of policies that protect and support females. Step It Up asks governments to make national commitments that will close together the gender equality gap from laws and policies to national action plans and adequate investment. Reflect on progress made to call for change, to celebrate acts of courage and determination by ordinary women who have played an extraordinary role in the history of their countries and communities. International Women's Day is an opportunity for us to recognize achievements of all women who have been through a rough and tough times. We, the National Council of Women, congratulate women and their achievements. Women has been brave and are strong. Richard says she empathized with those who have been abused and called on persons to be compassionate to their situation while they regain their strength. We do sympathize and empathize with those of women and girls who fell prey to the vicious attacks of senseless and inhumane acts of rape and attempted rape, physical and psychological abuse. These are violations of their human rights for the favor of jobs and other worthless gifts. Women will always have to do the necessary thing to help protect themselves from predators and perpetrators by being more vigilant. Please be reminded that you may be the next victim of a vicious act or intended inhumane treatment and action. As women and girls, we are also expected to be resilient a charity organization called Simply Help has donated $160,000 worth in items to the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The Simply Help organization was established by Tina Bo, a Taiwanese-born Los Angeles, California resident, who 16 years ago established the foundation, which has assisted over 30,000 persons worldwide. Ambassador of the Republic of China on Taiwan, Bo Shangur, who presented the container filled with clothing and other items on behalf of Bo and her foundation, 
says they are mainly intended for the underprivileged women and the children. Over the past 16 years, the foundation has made numerous donations in kind and in cash to the underprivileged families and persons in Asia, Africa, and Central America. They also set up 26 schools and other vocational training facilities in Asia and Central America to help people stand on their feet. As I understand, uh, so far, there are over 30,000 people uh, that have benefited from uh, those programs run by this organization. The donation made by the Simply Help Foundation this time consists of uh, 422 boxes of clothes, shoes, bags, pillows, soccer balls, ceramic candle holders, and cups at the value of 160,000 dollars roughly. Ambassador Gur thanked this country for its relationship for 35 years and also praised the government for passing the Zero Hunger Act. It's great work. So your commitment to eradicate hunger by 2020 is especially most admirable. The international community, including my country, will stand by the Ancestral people to achieve the goal. As we are celebrating the 35th anniversary for our diplomatic relations this year, I also like to take this opportunity to express our appreciation to the people and the government of San Vincent Grenadines for help for being our staunch partner over the years. I believe that through both the government to government and people to people cooperation in all fronts, like today's event, our friendship will further grow and endure. And Minister of National Mobilization, Frederick Stevenson, expressed gratitude to Bo and others from the Simply Help Charity. He noted that the items will be distributed with parity and noted that the items will contribute to this country's Zero Hunger Initiative. We know them by name. We have their telephone contacts. We know where they live. And so it is very easy for us to move in and to work with them. Yes, there are some persons who would not have gone to the, the Department of the Family Affairs Division, but we have our community development officers who are out in the fields on, on a daily basis. And the persons are able to access the services of the Ministry of National Mobilization in every nook and cranny here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. A meeting is expected to be held sometime soon with government officials and people of Kanawan in an effort to resolve an ongoing dispute on that Grenadine island. The issue surrounds the access to beaches on the island by locals via land and sea. On a call-in radio program on Friday, Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonsav said arrangements are being made to have two government officials attend a meeting which was requested by the Kanawan Island Development Council. On the, on the Kanawan issue, I got a, a son email this morning um, from the Kanawan Island Development Council. The secretary sent an email um, talking about a meeting between the government and themselves and, and others, and I, I wrote back. Um, I think the email would have been sent off already, if not, we go shortly to say that um, I am requesting you as the Director of Grenadines Affairs and the Permanent Secretary in the Office of the Prime Minister. Um, Mr. Godfrey Pompey, who is also a man from Canoan, mm -hmm. to, to meet with, the, with this council and um, my executive secretary, uh, Mrs. Jackson, will, will do the coordination. A call has been made for Vincentians to treasure the endemic species of animals found in the country's forest. Speaking with SVG Television on Friday, Senior Forestry Supervisor Cornelius Richards pointed out that St. Vincent and the Grenadines is home to a variety of animal life, 
which is not found anywhere else in the world, and encourages Vincentians to do their part to protect them. Making special mention of the Gonatod Dodani, a unique lizard found only on Union Island, Richards warns that the species faces extinction due to poachers who sell the creature on the black market. The species I want to bring to your attention today is the Gonatod Dodani. This is, this is probably a new word to most Vincentian. We are accustomed to the Amazon, the Geldingi, and other species. But this, the Dodani is a very small lizard. It's a gecko that is found in a very unique habitat on Union Island, just above the Chatham Bay area. What is unique about the species is that it's, up to now it has not been discovered anywhere else in the world but within that 120 acre block in Union Island. The species is currently threatened because the area is of course slated for development and persons has easy access to the site and we know for a fact that the species has been harvested from the wild and it's being placed for sale internationally. That goes against the laws of St. Vincent and Grenadines where our wild species are to be protected and the habitat in which they live are to be protected as well. He appeals to persons on Union Island to protect the species of lizard which he says they should be proud of. The Dodani is endemic to Union Island and we are asking persons to develop that sense of pride for this species, very importantly. It's your flagship species and we are asking persons on Union Island as well to be vigilant. Persons may want to come in un unescorted, unattended and go into these areas and harvest this lizard and export it illegally. If this continues to occur, the population which is now listed at about six, six, just over 6,000, sounds like a lot. But it's not a lot for a little lizard sitting in 120 acres, it's not a lot. Uh, 6,000 of these species can hold in a, in a five gallon bucket, if you know what I mean. And if persons go in and start harvesting these animals, you may well see a situation where it becomes extinct in its wild and you would find it in, on every, in every little terrarium of families and so on in Europe that we do not want. Speaking on the issue of protection of the endemic creatures of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Richards revealed that a frog called the Prestamantis chevrai, which is unique to mainland St. Vincent, also faces extinction due to a citrus fungus which has wiped out reptiles around the world. Richards added that the forestry department believes the fungus was introduced via an unauthorized person accessing the forest reserves, and his department is contemplating a ticketing system to protect these creatures and prevent what he calls a catastrophic collapse of the ecosystem. Now considering a permit system for persons wishing to enter these areas because we are almost certain that the citrus fungus went into the frog population as a result of persons going in unsupported or unauthorized into these areas where these species are found. You may say, oh well, what's the big deal about a frog? But the frog is part of a food chain. And if that frog population falls or it becomes unavailable as part of the food chain, you may well find other species collapsing because it wouldn't be able to that 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 frog would not be there to, to predate on, on certain insects and so on. You may see a, a rise in the population of those insects, whether it be mosquitoes or flies or you know, and we can also see a collapse in the overall system. As small as each entity is within our wildlife chain, they are important. And you can have what is called a catastrophic failure of our food chain if that you know, when that occurs. In an effort to pay homage to Vincentian heritage, local entrepreneur Hayden Bilingi has created a line of t-shirt brands depicting pieces of the Carib and Garifuna heritage. Speaking at the launch of HB Collections last Friday at the Marco Plaza, Bilingi noted that he is very proud to be associated with the initiative as there is a need to showcase true Vincentian culture and heritage. I feel that we are a strong people we are resilient people, we are resistant, and in a time like this, we have to have that kind of character. We cannot forget what our ancestors did by fighting for this nation, and in the month of March, we should be all proud that indeed we can say we are either Carib or we are Garifuna, because indeed we have a proud ancestry, and we should this should engender national pride among us. And so, September last year, I had a concept to start a t-shirt line, and I said, what would I do? And I said I would pay homage and I would honor my ancestry. Highlighting the various brands of the collection, 
Bilinji outlined that persons should be proud of their national heritage as it is a part of who we are as a people. He described the t-shirts as tangible heritage and urged the Vincentian public to support the collection which he said showcases national pride throughout Heritage Month. The one I'm wearing, I am Yurume, which means St. Vincent in our Garifuna language. And my moderator, of course, has I am Garifuna. There's one that is dubbed Caribs. There's one that says, St. Vincent lands so beautiful, taken from the words of our anthem. There's also one that speaks of the Carib chief, which is Yubutu paying, of course, honor to our chief, Paramount Chief Chateau, Joseph Chateau. And of course, there's the Hayden Billingy collection as well, which really is the HB design. And of course, I, how can I forget, um, the exile. You know, the exile has been a very tragic journey for our Carib, Garifuna people. And as much as it is, it is very sad, we must not forget what they would have gone through. Because many civilizations have died because they have not fought. And we have fought, and we should be proud. I hope that as we, as we contemplate on our history, that we would not forget who we are. We must respect who we are, love who we are, and show a sense of na national pride, because we have survived, and we are here. In news from the courts, Ricardo Samuel, a resident of Chauncey, who was sent by Chief Magistrate Ration Brown to the Mental Health Hospital at Orange Hill to undergo a psychiatric evaluation to determine if he was fit to stand trial on an indictable charge, reappeared in court earlier today. It was stated by Magistrate Brown, who had received a report from the medical official at the health institution, that based on the evaluation of Samuel's mental status, among other things, that he has been deemed mentally fit to answer the charge. Samuel is accused of having in his possession a jug containing gasoline and matches, along with other items for the purpose of destroying the ULP constituency office at Chauncey by fire on February 7, 2016. When the charge was put to him, Samuel pleaded not guilty to the charge. As a result, senior prosecutor Adolphus Delpesh had no objection to his bail, which was allowed in the sum of $2,000 with one surety. The matter is expected to be heard on April 7, 2016. And members of the Rapid Response Unit have busted Chang Lee Delpesh, a resident of Rose Hall on the leeward side of the island, on two separate charges. After he was found with over 5,000 grams and 2,000 grams of marijuana at Rose Bank on March 5, 2016. 15, uh, this should be 2016. Delpish was escorted to the Serious Offenses Court this morning before Chief Magistrate Rayshon Brown and maintained his innocence. The police prosecutor had no objection to his bail, which was allowed in the sum of $9,000 with one surety. The matter was adjourned for trial on March 29, 2016.